This video is sponsored by Grimdark.com. If you're looking to prove to your mates just how much you love the Grimdark future, Grimdark.com is the place for you. They produce fun and amusing designs from your favorite futuristic war games. If you see someone with a comedy game and shirt on, you know they've got great taste. If t-shirts aren't your thing, they do the designs on stickers too. Perfect for liven up the wet palette, carry case, or even your car. The quality is excellent and they ship all over the world. So if you're looking to liven up your wardrobe with some cool grim dark designs, click the link in the description below. Me and Pichu are wearing some of the designs in this episode, including Pat, even though he's off camera. Promise he was. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Pichu. Hello, I'm Patrick. And hi, I'm Jeff. And if you two want the opportunity to ask questions to our guests, then consider joining our Patreon. You could ask them what their favourite cheese is, or potentially, did you really die at the Battle of Plano Field? Speaking of which... Hello, Alessio Cavatore. Hello. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me. That, that was obviously a random part of your career. Uh, the cheese. No, the no. cheese. I'm dying at the <laughs> Pelennor Fields. But <laughs> well, that too, yes. For anyone uh, who, I'll be surprised, but for anyone that doesn't know who you are, brief description of who Alessio is, if you have sure. a, yeah, yeah. a paragraph or two to describe <laughs> your many, many years of career. Yeah, I mean, it started in... 96, 1996, I think, I moved to, to the UK uh, to be a translator for Games Workshop mm. uh, from Italy. Uh, we were starting to translate uh, Warhammer 4th, 5th edition, 4th going to 5th um, into Italian. So I joined the studio, came up, and uh, suddenly I was in the middle of like, <gasps> you know, all the people that <laughs> used to look at books and was like, oh my God, it's Andy Chambers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was a game and player. I was like, oh, like Jerry Johnson, Rick Priestley, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of went to heaven a little bit, <laughs> a little bit when I was, yeah. So I started working in the studio as a translator. I was definitely a competitive tournament player. Um, I... Crash mercilessly a few people in the staff <laughs> tournaments, won a couple of staff tournaments, and uh, annoyed the game developers a lot on rules and stuff while I was translating. Yeah. So I got this Good. job. <laughs> <laughs> I got this job as a, that was a position of a games development coming up, and I got it and started designing games instead of translating them, which was great. Um, and that was quite a long stint from 90. Eight, something like that, until wow. 27 to 2010. That makes it, what, 13 years, yeah, something like that? Yeah, Of Well, starting with army books, Warhammer. Then uh, eventually I was given the, the honour of uh, actually being the lead writer on, a, on one edition of Warhammer. Mm. I think it was sixth, perhaps. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And um, so done that. Then, again, 40K, lead writer yeah. on, on, on a fifth, sixth, something like that. And then uh, Lord of the Rings. The, the best edition. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. I guess it depends who you ask. Who, but... I was going to say, if you name specific editions, someone will be like, okay, this is the man that I blame everything for. <laughs> yeah. Well, recently I went to a tournament, a sixth edition tournament, and it was hilarious because people assumed, uh, Warhammer one, yeah. so people assumed that I knew everything because my name on the book, course, my name yeah. on a lot of the army books and stuff. So I bring my Skaven, and the people are playing sixth edition, and like, well, you know everything, right? I was like, ah, the last time I played this was like, 30 years ago. <laughs> so, so I remember nothing. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, there was a great moment when break test, double one, I go, I only, only double one can save me. Double one, yes! I said, I go, double one, yes! The, the whole room goes silent, they all look at me and go, what's he on about? It's like, double ones. And they go, that's seventh edition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a swing sixth edition. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> that, I suppose you, when you've done so much stuff, it's easy that they just all merge into one. Yes, I there is. There, sure that. there is a lot of that. Yeah, and then after after forty k, then Lord of the Rings. Yeah, which was the I think the the the, the, the peak of my career there really the, when I became the ring bearer. Yes, and, uh, you yeah, remember, yeah. and uh, I was running that system for. Quite a few years and um, done all the editions got to be in the movie as i never <laughs> mentioned that before a few times and um, oh, so that was the death on Pelinor yeah, 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 yeah. Right. We'll, we'll come back yeah. to that a bit. Yeah. Oh, it's an important role it's <laughs> very very important uh yeah so that until 2010 when that came to an end so yeah. no more games workshop left workshop and uh, started river horse my yes. own company my own business which was um a big step yeah different step. yeah bet. And Real Horse since then, since 2010, so it's been going for now 
13 years again. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. Uh, doing... The idea was to make our own games, uh, my games, uh, designing the board games, particularly mm. war games. Uh, but ended up doing quite a lot of that, but also quite a lot of uh, services for other companies. So yeah. I've written, because being, I kind of have a lot of experience on war games, a lot of companies that do that kind of stuff uh, recruited us as, a, you know, as writers, designers. So yes, I ended up doing, I don't know, uh, Bolt Action, perhaps the biggest one. Bolt yes, Action yeah. for, for World of Games. Uh, I've done Kings of War for Mantic. Yeah. Uh, I worked on Conquest. Yes, uh, yeah. I worked on uh, uh, Draco games yeah. stuff, a lot, of, a lot of the Battles of Valerna games. So yeah, no, it's been busy. Yeah, <laughs> all, all the game systems out there that are regarded as quite good game systems. Oh, really? That says a lot about your, uh, <laughs> your <laughs> writing <so> skills. <laughs> um, I, I like how you just blush, dusted over the blush. Lord of the Rings bit. Blush, so, blush. I mean, my, my, and it's well regarded as like one of the best rule systems written, uh, certainly from my point of view, and a lot of the our viewers uh, agree with that as well. It's like as a, as a skirmish rule system, it stood the test of time for a long, long time. And, I mean, you know, when you re wrote that and made it, did you expect people to still be playing that game system using pretty much the same rule system that is... Because it's only been tweaked a little bit since mm -hmm. its first development. Yeah, it was actually, again, at a, at a tournament recently yeah. uh, and uh, in, in Lincoln. Yes. And, again, yeah. it was fun to see people still playing it yeah. and enjoying it. It was really good. And let's... But before before I take all, all the merit, I mean, to be honest, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of Rick Priestley. Oh, well, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> there. Yeah. See, when we made the game, uh, basically on the, on the first edition, on the Fellowship, yeah. Rick was in charge. Rick yeah. was the lead writer. Yeah. So it's Rick's game, really, not my game, uh, originally. We worked together on it, yeah. of course. At the time, the, all the team actually pulled together. So there's Jervis and Andy Chambers yeah. and Gavin yeah. Thorpe, you know, all those people together. We worked on the first edition. But I think because I'm so incredibly passionate about talking i mean it's, mm. I, I always say the same thing is i'm not religious but if there is one thing in my life that is closest to a religion it would be the lord of the rings yeah you know, the yeah. book you always read that you can quote from yeah, you always yeah, yeah. so it's a big thing of your life and so because i was so passionate about it uh rick eventually during the the first one and then certainly from the second one from two towers just went yours yeah. you carry on and, and basically I, I inherited so i cannot really claim it's my system yeah. i worked heavily on it and yeah. i definitely developed it yeah. to what it became and made up what the expansion was going to be so yeah it's a lot of me but it's not all me yeah, yeah. rick rick deserves a lot of credit on that i mean you called yourself and it was a good good name you were known as the ring bearer would you say that rick was sauron then he, he kind of like <laughs> <Gave> the <ring. laughs> just passed that to you <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah, we, did, we did a lot of that metaphors and yes yes it was quite a, a common thing like yeah there you go yeah the ring i mean it was it was used for a lot of things cause it was used for old, um old west mm -hmm. then uh, uh we I remember there was like a great war edition um, for because there was yeah, war and historicals for yeah, a time yeah, yeah. Um, headed wow, by Rob Room. <laughs> yeah, there was yeah. lot lots of games. You've done some obviously over than bolt action. You've done quite a expansive stuff as well, like historical based stuff. Is that right? I've done a Waterloo uh, yeah. Waterloo board game designed by yes. myself, which was great. It was great to actually do all the research, all this. I'm glad research. you didn't say it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, the process. I mean, I don't know whether the game is shit or not. I've, I've heard good things about it, but but actually the process was great. Mm. The, the learning going on the field going on the battlefield in the museum under okay, the field yeah, and yeah. Doing, reading lots of books and uh, kind of I had luckily I had friends with big libraries you know the, the Perry Twins yes, and uh, yeah, yeah. John Stallard so I just went all right books lots of books so I, I did a lot of research and wrote down the, the my version of the battle it's been portrayed a few times yeah, yeah. but no, that was fun it was good yeah. um, historical gaming yeah then I worked on Black Powder I worked on Hail Caesar yeah. uh, so yeah no, quite a lot of the Warlord systems I, the, I worked with the little photo at the front of the first edition of Black Powder where they put all like the yeah. writers faces on uh, is it the Crimean generals? I don't remember if I'm in that picture. I, was, I, don't I, was a, I don't know if you ever saw it at the front of Black no, Powder. There's, there's an old photo of like a bunch of the British Crimean generals. Yeah. And they put like Jervis's face on one and like <laughs> Perry's face and Stallard and they're just like superimposed. Yes, I don't know if I was already, because that might have been when I was still at oh, work. Sure. It might have yeah, been, yeah, because yeah. I was playing Black Powder. Um, yeah. Um, quite early on into my studio career when yeah. you were probably still there. Yeah, yeah because... So. Uh, oh, I think Hell Caesar is the one that I actually contributed the most of. I've wrote some scenarios and stuff. It was all Roman jokes about, you know, kind of like uh, the Romans go home kind of thing. A lot of that. It was fun. Yeah. Being a Roman yourself, that's exactly. fine. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Romanus eaten domums. What? <laughs> um, if we can go back to, to, to Middle Earth for, for a minute. Um, I've never played it. 
I don't know the rule set at all, but all I hear constantly is it's the best rule system ever. Um, right. From loads of different people, well, mm. from Peach, from from loads of patrons. I've had loads of fun with it over the years. Mm. Yeah, like what what's different about it? What do you think? Like the secret sources, like in that game, that makes it so good in comparison to, like, is it people looking back with a bit of nostalgia as well, maybe, or like is say like you of War Cry? Yeah, like is it? How is it different to that? Is it better? Like I don't know. I, I'm I'm intrigued to to know like the why. <laughs> <laughs> if there is one, maybe but, there isn't, and that's fine. Yeah, I mean that's a tough how, question. How technical do you want me to go? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a uber technical as, as game much design. As you want. <laughs> no. uh, well, obviously I am biased because a obviously being heavily involved with it, and uh, um, and also the, the setting for me is obviously magic. So the, yeah. there is that. So it, it just puts your mind in a certain mindset yeah. and just so there is that but if i stick to the game system just try to analyze the game system purely as a game um i think we are used to play games with lots of uh, with units so mm. where an element that you control is made of a unit of models there's several models yeah. on, in a unit and so you control four five six ten elements each element is normally a, a mix of it is like several models. Sometimes it's a single model, is big heroes or tanks, or whatever. But normally it's a bunch of guys. When it's a bunch of guys, the complexity of the system goes over. The, it's complete. It's so much more complicated to design and write and tight mm-hmm. rules, particularly on a, on a war game where you know it's the terrain and all of that. So it's heavier, much cumbersome. You have more rules. It, interactions between models becomes a lot more difficult. The Lord of the Rings is a game where each model is individual. Each model is stand on his own and walks, moves around on its own. Yeah. And the interaction between models is actually something that we manage to make people want to do, as opposed mm. to these oh, guys like- have to stay within an inch of each other and uh, f- keep formation. And so you have a lot of rules like that in 40k bolt action, where yeah. you're all right. If some guys get shot, killed. Well, then all oh, you have to move and get back into. Your- oh. So it, it, there's a lot of stuff you have to do. While in Lord of the Rings. Uh, you have the these guys here, and uh, oh, this guy with the, the spear. If he goes behind him, can fight ta- through him into base contact. Oh, so you fun. want to be next to the guy. Yeah. If you have a shield wall uh, that basically doesn't let people surround and trap your models, then you're 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 more effective. So you actually want to bunch up, not to let your formation be disturbed. But you want to do that. Mm, you don't yeah. have to do that. There's no rules for that. There's no rules forcing you to do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's some rules that invite you to do that, which I think is the strength of it. You, yeah. you have this formation that happen naturally because you want to, because mm. it's almost like more realistic in a way, because mm. again, is the if we stay next to each other with shields like that, you know, the enemy doesn't get all around yeah. each one of us. And so there's a lot of that going on, which is I think yeah. cool. Spare bit of it. I certainly since then, I think I favor uh, systems where you have single models moving around. I find them so much easier to write for, and mm-hmm. you can get a lot of detail like that. I've done that with the Terminator. Yeah. Terminator. Uh, we had a license for a Terminator um, game, so I made a miniatures war game. Uh, on Genesis? Genesis, yeah. yeah. One. And I've heard that that's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Again. I, tried, well, I tried to apply those, li- those, those lessons and improve on it. A and, lot better uh, than its film, I would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot possibly comment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I did that, and yes, it's uh, still a popular system. People play, even though we stopped supporting it years ago. But there's still groups playing that, and uh, I think I'm gonna definitely take that and use it for my new license. A little yeah. plug here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we got the Ghost in the Shell uh, license recently. Uh, the Ghost in the Shell by by Shiro, so the actual graphic novel, the original, and I'm super excited about it. Yeah, <laughs> and, amazing. Uh, and again, the, the the Terminator system is a good starting point for that. Yeah. Obviously, it will not be the same, but that kind of game. If I can oh, ask amazing. Alessio, when you have um, you have to write a game system for an IP that you, as you've previously said, utterly love. Mm. How hard's the balance of making the the character or the unit work in a game versus what you know they actually are? How 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 much is that? How difficult is that trade off? Because you know if you you've you've got to when you love characters, you really want to portray them as exactly as you read them, don't you? But obviously the game will have other ideas. How, how hard's that? Yeah, it is very difficult uh, keeping your biases out of uh, out of the system. But of course, you you try <laughs> because you want the game to be 
reasonably balanced, right? Mm. And one thing that we're working with IPs, what we found, starting from Lord of the Rings, mm. but then also uh, any other assets that work, like Terminator, etc., is that often you're helped by the fact that the um, you don't get to do too much with the core characters, as in, you know, you you don't normally go, right, this is the, the most powerful guys and I do a lot with them because the license holder will often be a bit nervous of you doing too much stuff with the core characters. Yeah. So you tend to focus maybe on uh, secondary characters or even characters that are not in the in the main story but plausibly could be around. An example, we can focus on Rangers of the North, which are not named, but of course there are more Rangers around. Yeah, and they course, can, like yeah. These guys were, you know, around where the top, delaying some of the Nazgul in this scenario, etc., which obviously is not portrayed, but you're not going Aragorn, oh, he's dead, oops. You know, which, <laughs> of course, which, of course, you can do, and you, you have to do, it, yeah. of course. Yeah, they have to be in the game, but uh, uh, you tend to focus the development on other bits around that mm. are not the core characters, and that helps with that. Because, like, uh, in Ghost in the Shell, I would make the major Motoko Kusanagi. I would, yeah, of course, know, she's yeah. so cool and she's so powerful. And she's, but on the other hand, she's also fragile. I mean, in, in the film, in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the anime, in the in the cartoon, in the, in the manga, she gets eventually killed and yeah, <gasps> damaged. Spoilers. Uh, spoilers <laughs> <and> her, <laughs> well, her body gets destroyed. She yeah. doesn't get killed, mm. right? A subtle yeah. difference. But um, her, her her android body is a fantastic. Cyber body is, is destroyed. Um, but um, again, the temptation of making her uber is very strong, and you kind of go right. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll concentrate on you know trainee agents that work in the same agency in the same section nine instead of you know the main characters. They will have to be there. They will have to be there, mm. of course, because that's so iconic. But, yeah. yeah. So does that then help inform how you? add rules to those bigger characters so like doing the range of the north analogy you'd, you'd get them working in the game system then you go right now i know what aragorn stats need to be like and how he would work in the game is that is that why you start with the the peripheral stuff you start my well, normally when you balance a game you, you start with the you kind of identify a benchmark in which yeah, was in, yeah i guess in lord of the rings would have been rohan or uh, yeah. or gondor normal warrior level and and from there you obviously increase decrease and trying to you know make it proportionally good but obviously there are some characters some creatures like the balrog yes, or sauron yeah, yeah. and you kind of go yes how many points is that you know kind of like, it's like oh um well he needs all the rules. <laughs> <laughs> yes and that those are clearly a bit more of a scenario thing because they're yeah. so over the top you yeah know? And, yeah you know when you put down prime marks and stuff you kind of go well, a bit, you know, should we even go there should we even go there yeah you know, maybe they just just leave them in the background as a, yeah you know, as a, yeah i've heard that sort of argument people mm. are saying oh i like i lost a bit of interest in like they, or they thought that the primark shouldn't have returned mm. because it's more exciting that they're not there but then when you have them on the tabletop and it's like oh this Primark's dead like I guess like Angron is like oh he comes back and he just keeps coming back but like Gilliman or what have you oh, and then yeah. who cares about Kalgar anymore because you've got Gilliman like, yeah, yeah. You know, like Kalgar oh yeah he's been demoted it makes sense like it is a scenario based thing because I always thought like when I was in retail, people were like, oh, when are they going to make a model of the Emperor? I was like, if they do that, I mean, that's like a huge game. You need him, like, taking on, like, a Primark, and it just becomes like, that should be a separate game in its own right, which is Horus versus the Emperor, as opposed to the Emperor rocking up with some custodians, and it yes. just seems a bit too one-sided. Yeah, <laughs> I, think for, I think for me, it always feels like they knew that they would be a problem. That's why they made them all disappear in the first place. You know, and it's like, and then you go, you got rid of them purposely so that they weren't going to be an issue in the game and the game went on for so long without there being a prime mark in and then to start bringing them back you just think you know you've got to be careful how you mm. how you approach them because you think next because eventually it's going to be at the moment it's like oh gilliman came back and in the game in the idea of the story that he he helps sort of try to get the the, the um, terror back on a bit of an even keel and and one thing or another. But then the problem being is, is eventually you, you do two or three and then everyone's then just waiting on their one coming back, aren't they? You know, and then you yeah. must be really annoying if you're the Blood Angel player and you go, <laughs> uh, everyone go, oh, I got mine and I got mine. You go, well, I won't be asking when's mine coming back because I know that's not happening. You know? yeah. <laughs> so it's, Unless think, they rewrite the rules to yeah. make it come out, which yeah, then yeah, and then, and then you go, yeah, and you rewrite the rules and then the next thing you know, you go, you could, you know, of the 789 books on the Horus Heresy that Black Library's already written, it's like, you go, I'll just yeah. sort of dilute it a bit, doesn't yeah. it? You know, I personally think they should have just left them well alone myself. But, 
Especially because, yeah. and if you play the game, it's always got to be, well, he's just injured and carried back to the ship, isn't it? It's not dead, is it? You know what I mean? Yeah, because I, I, there's that criticism in, in Star Wars a bit, isn't it? And it, was it in the Han Solo movie where you were like, oh, that's why the Millennium Falcon's computer is like a bit sassy because it used to be a droid. Like, yeah. I didn't need to know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's constantly trying to, well, like when you write inside things, you've got to, when you bookend and stuff, it's, yeah. Mm. You know, and you know this because when you try and, you, you with Lord of the Rings, you're writing inside a pre-existing thing, aren't you? So your ability to start adjusting it can only go so far, can't That's it? Really? Right. Yeah. Another reason to stick to not well-known characters yeah. because then mm. you have more freedom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Aragorn casts a spell, and <laughs> Alicia has been assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I agree. I think leaving the the big things, the biggest things out, is probably a, the best thing because it also allows people to just you know fantasize about oh, what would be yeah. a starting game of mm. you know I don't know the, the, the Valar you know if if, if Manwe came down and fought what would it be like kind of thing. I think the funniest thing we've done with that was Tom Bombadil mm. that was me going right uh, I, how about we make a profile which is all question marks <laughs> yes <laughs> I remember that yeah. <laughs> surely that's not possible yes it's possible let's do it <laughs> I forgot about that yeah because um, I, I forget which book set it, it was in now because it's one of those little well, extra yeah, adult well, books yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've got I've actually remember. brought a bunch of the original um, Lord of the Rings books with me I've left them in my bag like a fool but I, 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 one of the things I was going to say there because I was like looking through it go oh I'll just double check because I'm sure Alessia was part of Lord of the Rings when it first started opened up no credits at all in the in, new books in, in any of the Lord of the Rings books and right. I was like oh is that a New Line Cinema related thing that you couldn't credit anyone even the, the original ones yeah the original really? ones yeah, no, yeah. zero that. credits right. uh, it wasn't until like War of the Ring and then later on that like Matt Ward or such and such was it like Jeremy uh, like War of the Ring which was like the big unit yeah, starting version that, yeah, yeah, yeah has Matt Ward and Jeremy Vitok as like the rules writers, but all the previous things just didn't have... But surely the, the books, the, the core rulebook has credits in it? Uh, probably like the bigger, chunkier ones. I think it does. does. Yeah, yeah, but... Does. I don't remember the, the, remember the little the ones? That, not the little ones. It was like the A4 size ones that came in the box set. So like the Fellowship, when that first came out, you'd have like the black book with right. uh, the ring race on it and then there was yeah, the yeah, two yeah. towers yeah. I'd, I'd no credits at all really? it. Yeah. I could zip I off and uh, get well I could show them after to be <laughs> fair but yeah the, the, I, I always remember a really interesting thing with that as well was like those books came out probably or the rules came out probably a couple of months before the movie came out so I remember when yeah, we got the, the one, sets yeah. for yes. the fellowship it was like October time because we were doing intro gaming in the stores and I really liked the scenarios where doing their best to try and work out how the, it played out in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> and there's like the Ammon Hen bit. I was just like, oh, this is cool. Let's play that. And you watch the movie like, it's nothing like the movie. <laughs> but that's because you had to work blind, right? Yes, it's quite funny. There's a story that we <laughs> we were doing the, the Two Towers version and we're like, is the fell beast then or not? Because ah, in the book there is this scene where it flies overhead, but it is not seen; it's just yeah. heard, and then the Legolas shoots him. But, but it's not. So is it being in the movie? And we kind of went to Peter Jackson. I was like, "Are you putting it? In, is it? Can we see the fell beast yeah. in the in the second movie?" Like, nope. Oh. No, 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 right, no, 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 for this. So we didn't put it in the in the game. So yeah, like, all yeah. right, we'll put it in the in third, in the third version, in the, in the Return of the King, because clearly. So we were sitting there in the cinema watching the. <laughs> <laughs> the two towers of the premiere kind of going and suddenly like in the dead march she's like what and then at the end of Oskiliath as well they were like round the ruins <laughs> damn you Peter Jackson <laughs> <laughs> so there is no film it's fine yeah, yeah and then the worst of it is then is all the fans going why isn't it in the game yeah, yeah. <laughs> you should have put it in it was like <laughs> I mean that aside I mean like looking back at the old um, scenarios that you even though you had no sort of concept of how that story played out in the movie, the scenario still played quite true to the story, even though the setup was slightly different and stuff like that. So it, it's testament to, like, the team's knowledge of the stories. Knowledge and, of the story and a yeah. lot of playtesting. And a lot of playtesting, <laughs> yeah. A lot of playtesting. <laughs> my my favourite thing, I think, from doing all the Lord of the Rings stuff, and, um, and I've done it a lot, was we used to, and White Dwarf certainly had 
a oh, what was it called now it was like your own fellowship you basically created your own fellowship um so you you Too basically long. pick like your aragorn equivalent so it could be aragorn or it could be i think it was like ama or someone there was like other characters around like right. glorfindel and stuff right. like that. so you'd have like your your aragorn equivalent your gandalf equivalent right. your legolas gimli boromir equivalents and then your hobbit equivalents you can make your own i think it was the fantasy fellowship i think it was called right um and that was fun but also like the idea of playing the fellowship through <coughs> the scenarios but mm. never like regenerating the might points and will points in their wounds so yeah. if they die they die yes. and then you carry on to the next one it's like he's only got one fate point left so let's see how he gets on Aragorn died at m- 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 um, a Moria of mine I could never get m- my fellowship past Moria yes, it was, it was, a hu- it was hard challenging yeah it was good it was good for, it was one of those things that's really good fun especially when you get to like Amon Hen or something like that and you've got Bilbo left not Bilbo sorry like, <laughs> like Pippin or like Merry you're like great Pippin's got the ring he's got like no, no stats that are <laughs> of any use fighting against 30 euro kai this is going to be fun nice meat yeah. was back on the menu <laughs> meat was <laughs> yeah soft <laughs> sweet meat <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure hobbits taste nice I'm sure they do probably it's because yeah. of all the you know, the fatty foods the I reckon yeah all the beer and yeah, yeah, yeah. flavours it all yeah. Yeah. yeah so what was the first thing you wrote after leaving Games Workshop ooh um I think uh we I got sidetracked straight away, kidnapped by <laughs> by Ronnie for Kings of War, mm. uh, and uh, also Bolt Action. I think those were definitely, you know, I'll start making my own games and get drags like, no, wait, <laughs> wait, before you do that. So, like, oh, but, but. so I actually went into uh, yeah double mantic warlord period mm. of uh, Kings of War and uh, and Bolt Action. I think that was the the first thing for myself. I think the first the thing that started the the model of licensing and was actually, uh, we started with Terminator. We did yeah. a Terminator Genesis uh, war game, which led to the big, biggest success of River Horse to date, which is the Labyrinth. Mm. Basically, starting the relationship with the Jim Henson company and starting yeah. the Labyrinth, Dark Crystal, that, that side of things, which is the, the biggest thing. Mm. We've done to date and still going. Oh, Labyrinth is great, and it's nice to see a, a game system uh, following that. Because uh, have you seen the Weta Workshop? Um, video. The- yeah, the, the way we created like the goblin town and like the labyrinth. Uh, scenery set itself. Yeah, there was Johnny Fraser Allen doing. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah. Doing all the it's terrain, like, sort of like yeah. modular and moves around. It's like insane. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I've always fancied playing a war game on that, and you can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With uh, all yeah, the feel free to like put <laughs> yeah, yeah, the box yeah, on the table. Yeah, we bought a, a prop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. Johnny Fraser Allen is the the sculptor that uh, in New, New Zealand that yeah. used to work for Weta and sculpted the the models for these for the expansions. Amazing. And, uh, so yes, there's a, this is the the bestseller. It's definitely the thing that is. Um, Kept the lights on a river horse and keeps going. <laughs> There's so much love for this IP in the world. It just yeah. um, it keeps going. It is, it's good fun. It, what I f- like about this is that it doesn't take itself seriously. It mm. is that kind of humor that goes with it, which is, yeah, it's Jim It's just oh, yeah. it's lovely. It's like the, the movie it doesn't take itself seriously. I mean, you got That's right. David yeah. Bowie of a massive cod piece. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that was actually part of the design, is, uh, is uh, Brian Froud's kind of. You know, when they were doing the design of the film, yeah, there was a specific thing because it, it's all, you know, is, is Sarah growing from a, from a girl into a woman and yeah, uh, yeah. kind of getting out. There is a subtext there that, well, in, intentionally by design. Oh, right, wow. The, oh, yeah. I, I had no idea about that. Right. Do, you surprise, mm-hmm. do you get surprised by the the fact that IPs of this age are still loved? On a, is it a surprising to you, do you think? Well, I mean, a lot of the stuff I do is from the 80s and stuff that I've done, games that I've done, are all pretty much based on 80s movies because mm-hmm. that's, I guess, when I was a, a teenager and I, a lot of the cool stuff for me was, you know, so we've done Terminator. Yeah. Uh, we've done Highlander. Yeah. Oh, amazing. We've, done, right. we've, done, we've done a Highlander game, yeah. Please oh, wow. tell me the rule is there can only be one at the end. Well, <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. And the head's magnetised. <laughs> 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 there's a lot of that, of jokes. And part of it is those jokes. Is, I mean, you do a Terminator game, there's so many quotes. You know, you, know, oh, you, you start to speak like Arnie. You know, the, so the rules are, you know, like literally, it's like there is no fate, but what he may, you know, I'll be back. <laughs> all the rules are like that. Like, and, and here you have magic dance and all the all the, all the fun things, Amazing. all the singing and the, the nonsense of Jim Henson. Um, so uh, what else? We did the Hunger Games. That's not eighties, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, uh, we tend to. 
pick on an IP that I love and, and do things with it. And um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like My Little Pony as well. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh, please show that as well, because I, I, I was surprised to see it. Uh, and it's yes. aimed at a younger generation as well as the parents, I suppose, as well. Yeah, yeah. basically, uh, I was, uh, I had a daughter, and when she was six, she was watching this show, and uh, I, was, I remember My Little Pony from the 80s. So, mm, you know, same, the hobby yeah. was a piece of plastic with mane, yeah. comb the mane, and I was like, I was like mm, not for me. I'm yeah, not yeah. interested. <laughs> Much more of a Care Bears man than yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was more like Fist of the North Star. Uh, kind of thing. Yeah, <laughs> you, <laughs> you took the stuff playing uh, Fist of the North Star with the, with My Little Pony. That's that's never going to end well, is it? Speaking of characters that are a bit too good, I mean, if we did think about oh, designing a war game for Fist of the North Star, so you have Ken Shiro and sixteen thousand thugs attacking, <laughs> 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 la, 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 destroying them all. Like, How do you balance that? Yeah, anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, basically, my daughter watches this cartoon, and uh, and I was like, oh, wow, wait, wait a second, what forest, dragons, manticores, spells? I'm in. So, what, 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 what's this? <laughs> so and uh, great humor again, and very good fun, very good fun. The kind of humor that you know kids get and uh, or grown-ups get. There's different levels there for everybody. It's a very good show. It's a very good show, and it's very wholesome. the The message is all about friendship. It's all about solving conflict through not through fighting mm. you know uh, so it, it, friendship is magic is the thing is about becoming friends and all the main arch villain of every series the like seven eight nine series and they always have this big enemy and very often in the next series they would be allies they they kind of work their differences together and uh, become yeah, friends great, yeah. so it, it's a very good message and uh, yeah encourages kids in this case of like you know my daughter her friends playing games and yeah. you're trying to encourage a good behavior like yeah. you know, like a being together, being friends, working together. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very good fun. This, this is the D with ponies, basically. D&D with ponies. I mean, that's <laughs> wonderful. And did you say that you approached them? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Um, After, I mean, with licensing, often my experience is that you, the, the first ones are the more difficult ones to get because you don't have, you know, you, you, mm. they, they want to see that you have done, that you you know the business, you know how to exploit licenses, etc. So I started with Terminator, which is most difficult, yeah. then... then I already had the uh, labyrinth, but uh, having worked on Lord of the Rings with King's Watch, it yeah. was again was something that I, was, I could say I worked on licensing before. It wasn't yeah. my license, yeah. but I, I worked mm. on the process. I know the process, and uh, so yeah. Th then you tend to approach them. Uh, occasionally, it happens that they approach you because again, it's the agents, the people that you work with, uh, mm. the, the people in licensing inside a, a licensor. Maybe sometimes move jobs and go to another company, and yeah. suddenly the paper that was we worked on Terminator went to work for, I think it was from, was it, uh, oh, I don't remember, Skydance, went to work for uh, Legendary. And that, so basically we got approached by Lionsgate, actually. Uh, from the, mm. the Hunger Games was actually they, them yeah. coming to us. It's like, would you like to do a Hunger Games game? Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sure. yes, 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 I, I would. That's great. And uh, did... <laughs> So, no, so, go on, um, did your daughter appreciate that you uh, you approached them and were like, hey, can I make a My Little Pony game? And then uh, you were like, this is for you, darling. She'd be like, I don't want to play it. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, teenagers. Yes. <laughs> when she was six and we started, yes, she was involved, lovely. Yeah. And of course, then now she would be playing a sorcerer, a, yeah. a tiefling sorcerer. <laughs> yeah. 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 Things have changed if she is obviously course, older. Now yeah. she's 15. So it was a, yeah, quite a long time ago. But yeah, it's... It, she liked the fact we, we, it was fun it was fun to do yeah. together of course yeah, yeah if i use my little pony as a segue what's your um what's your unicorn ip what one would you like to chase down and get hold of that you haven't had well i would have said ghost in the shell but hey <laughs> that out, yeah. <laughs> that's that, that's on the cards good 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 uh obviously you know there are the big ones it would be nice to write stuff for us for star wars etc et mm. et but you know it was game of thrones you kind of oh wow the big shows but niche stuff which is where i normally live is like yeah i think the the ghost in the show for me was a big win was a big yeah. I, mm. you can probably tell i'm quite excited about oh yeah this. absolutely <laughs> but, it, but it, it, it's iconic isn't it ghost in the show yes, yes for me it, it is. really is you know i remember when i i remember i remember going to the cinema to see it mm. and i'm being utterly blown away because it was the first japanese manga i'd seen on a big screen and doing utterly just for me as much as I think with the film I think it was the music for me mm. really the music is very amazing. iconic yeah absolutely yeah, but, yeah no, I, I started with the novel the graphic novel uh, yeah. the, the first time it came out and, oh I hoovered out quickly after seeing uh, the film just, yes, <laughs> that is great yes 
So I mean, my favourite is uh, the Scarlett Johansson interpretation. Uh, I've only uh, seen a bit. I need to I finish mean, watching that because uh, I started watching it and never got around to finishing it. You're just pushing buttons there, where you? Yeah. <laughs> I, tried, I tried to. Yeah. <laughs> Weirdly, my, I, I, we got hold of Akira and I never got around to watching Ghost in the Shell until like much later on. So I, I, I wasn't really... I didn't well, like experience are, like it. Like oh yeah, absolutely. Well. They're um, very different. Very, yes, very yeah, different. yeah, yeah. So uh, that was my first interaction with manga, and I really loved it. And we got like the graphic novels for that, and then we moved on to other stuff. And eventually, I got around to like going to Forbidden Planet or HMV and finding a lot of manga movies and cartoons and stuff. Um, but yeah, it was like that. That was my first interaction. How do you do a, an Akira game? It's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's just is, is that even possible? Yeah. Is that even just stay well away? Is that the kind of story? Yeah, yeah. yeah the drugs have to come in the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So some some stories are very cool, but they don't lend themselves no, very absolutely. very easily to, to games. Yeah. Which was going to be my other question: is like, is is there some like companies that have approached you with like game ideas? You're just like, I can't right rules for this 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 is just too ambiguous uh, there were situations where uh, you maybe explored a some ips maybe i shouldn't mention which ones but we mm. did explore some ips and uh, eventually decided to turn them down because uh you have to ask yourself where's the game in this, mm. in this ip right yeah. there, there is there a game a, a good example is the the hunger games yeah where actually we thought okay well what you obviously do is you do a survival game in the arena, like you know yeah. the, the classic, mm. uh, and you can go right. So and the characters you have to survive, and and the the, the author um, calling uh, the what's her name? Oh, Suzanne Collins. Yeah, she 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 was she said no, you cannot oh. do a game on the Hunger Games. Oh, That's okay. not a subject for fun. <laughs> in her head was. I feel like we're doing a, a game on the Holocaust. It's mm. like, this is horrible. This is kids taken from their families and made to kill each other for mm. sport. What? Yeah, are, are you, what what's yeah. wrong? What's wrong with you? We want to make a game out of that? I'm like, yeah, fair enough. So we ended up doing a, uh, concentrating on the Mockingjay, the second part of the, of the yeah. movies on the film, on the books. Uh, and so it's, it portrays the resistance against the capital and the, the, the uh, war. Okay, so it turns yeah. out effectively to be a, a war game. Yeah. And I think there we lost a lot of customers because, of course, a lot of the customers were like, why did you do a game on the Hunger Games? Yeah, well, why yeah, yeah, war? Because yeah. you know, the fans of that IP are into the characters that are in the arena, yeah. not so much into the old war side of things. Yeah. So you kind of have the IP but you're not portraying what people want and expect, and so you're kind of putting yourself out of the, your customer base. So yes, it, it's, yeah. it was an interesting experience. But. Yeah, yeah, kind of like defies expectations in a way, but not necessarily like oh, it defies it. Like yeah, I don't know. like it's not what people expect. Is that's guess. right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe maybe see how precious the uh, the writer of the Maze Runner is and go and see if they're like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that the one that does the Scorch Trials and whatever the other yeah, book yeah. is? Yeah. yeah, never actually watched those. I've heard yeah, they're, 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 they're the first one. Yeah, I, I quite I quite yeah, no, they're, they're teen film, but I think they're quite enjoyable. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, they, they might go, yeah, just kill teenagers. We don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, you've done a whole manner of war games from obviously Middle Earth, workshop related, codexes, army books. You've even, am I right in thinking you did stuff for more time quite early I on? I worked on more of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. with Thomas, yeah, yeah. That's I did the Skaven list and yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yes. You're still, was, still was involved of... with that. Yeah. <laughs> was that before or uh, during the Thomas period in... Um, with Thomas, yeah. yeah Thomas, yeah. Thomas was my line manager, uh, yeah. supervisor, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. it was, uh, basically, I was working for him when I started working there. I mean, I turned up the first day. It's like, hello, I'm here from, from Italian studio. I'm supposed to start today. And they're like, oh, we forgot about that. Um, um, but where's my desk? Mm, no. <laughs> There's a chair there. Uh, here's a notepad. <laughs> There's my computer. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll order it now. Yeah, for you. We'll that has never minutes. changed, by the way. <laughs> that has never changed. When I when I turned up, I had no desk. I had to source my... It's like literally like your, your first job is to turn up to the studio is one, find a desk, a chair, the equipment you need. And it's like never games, changed. Workshop, Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's mad. And it's like, it's never changed. It, was, it almost became a rite of passage. So when like I started out to go through that, when Duncan started, I was like, well, he had to, I 
about to suffer, so my, why why can't he? <laughs> yeah, and then the cycle continues. And the cycle continues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right of passage. Right? <laughs> if you're not proactive enough to get yourself a desk and a computer and stuff, then you're not. You're, you're not know, welcome here. Yeah. You start on a Monday morning in the corner room, and the aim of the game is by Friday you've got a desk and a computer. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I basically to almost was like, all right, uh, write me some uh, abilities for these vampire families that we were just starting to, you know, we're splitting the, the vampires uh, and the. And the, and the the, the, the wet and the dry undead into two books and, and it was the vampire counts and uh, it was like oh, write me abilities vampire powers for the family and I was like okay so I'm set, sat on my chair with my notebook <laughs> writing was like, that's how it began oh, amazing man. that's brilliant have you um, kept up to date with sort of 40k at all and, and bits and bobs no since 2010 when I left Workshop I actually had not have not played uh, current uh, against Workshop games because mostly I was, I am still very busy with with bolt action. Being yeah. that, that takes my war gaming time, going yeah. to events, and tournaments, yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. That's where I am, and yeah. maybe because I'm older, I guess you move from. Typically, you move from fantasy science fiction into into yeah. historical, don't you? When yeah. you get older, yeah. 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 traditional. Be- before you know it, it'll be model trains, <laughs> <laughs> war gaming model stamps. trains, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> stamps. I started off at stamps, so you know I've done that. That's fine. <laughs> so no, I have played bizarrely. Older version, sixth mm, edition, yeah. and, uh, and and they invited me to this Lord of the Rings one. I probably will join next year. Uh, but yeah, it's mate, that will be a current one, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah, had but, hold of the first edition book the other day. I was very, very tempted to buy it because it was on the oh. shelf in Warhammer World. Oh right, the reprint, and I was thinking oh, just more out of curiosity than anything <laughs> else, you know. Oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, so I do play Battle Sector on online, as in uh, the the, the, the yeah. computer game. So mm. I do play that, and there's tournaments of it and stuff. So I'm actually oh, playing wow. in the tournaments. Do you crush your enemies in that as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not often. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had no. I didn't realise you you'd done bolt action. It's obvious now when I think back because it's like, oh, yeah, of course you did. Mm. What what is really interesting, um, and you probably were not aware of this, but during the move from seventh edition 40k to eighth edition, when they were doing a lot of play testing, they were looking at the bolt action mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, wow. okay. it's, it's like, well, you know, Alessio's quite good at writing rules. Let's uh, let's see what's this, wow. the magic about this one. Because there was a time when they were like playtesting and doing the whole kind of like putting your your tokens in in the bag and then pulling them out and wow. and doing uh-huh. like. In, yeah, I'm getting a big head here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Which, well, yeah, well, I mean, it, it's it's a good system. I mean, I, I've fun. not played it, but I'm well aware of how. Well, I played it once or twice, but. That was a long time back, um, but I'm well aware of how like the mechanic works, and it's it's very clever, and it it did make a lot of sense for 40k. Weirdly, well, it's designed to the same scale, you know, yeah. same type of number of models, number of egging. I go back to the elements on the table, so they are not, you know, they are. I can see that the system's being used for both. Yeah, mm. sort of thing, yeah. Amazing. Interesting. Has there ever been a like a rule? Um, so obviously you you've made games that have been very public and parts of big companies like Warhammer and and Bolt Action and stuff like that. Is there ever like there, there must be quite a lot of comments and critique on the rules that you've made and stuff like that, which <laughs> which must come with you no, know, they're perfect. Um, like, has there ever been a rule where someone's gone like? I don't like this one. It doesn't make sense. But and you're like, well, maybe I agree with you, but it has to happen because of this. Like, I guess what I'm trying to say: were there any limitations to your rule writing, like enforced on you by writing in these big sort of IPs and stuff like that? All the time. Yeah, <laughs> all the time. I mean, that happens all the time. You 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 write a brief. You write for a customer, and the customer obviously has opinions and limits, and maybe they have a license, a license or, or you know other parties involved. Uh, like in the case of Bolt Action, it would be Osprey Publishing, which is part of working mm. with Warlord and stuff. So, so there's there's always influences and limitations and factors that influence your your design. And if you are a good game designer, I think you well, part of being a good game designer is actually interacting, listening and. Mm. flexing and adapting and being flexible uh, flexing is the wrong thing being flexible it's plus three yeah. I mean you can flex it's like well I, I wrote Lord of the Rings <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> being flexible yeah, and, yeah, uh, being, uh, being uh, <laughs> able to change and adapt your design to the needs of your customer that's mm. part of the yeah, part of the you, you yeah. have to learn to do that otherwise you don't go anywhere because you know, if you say no it has to be like this but no, we want it to be like that. No, it has to be like this. You're not going to win. That. <laughs> no, I so guess you have not. Has there ever been like a hill that you that you died on? <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yes, there's sometimes that you get yeah. to kind of, you know, the creative differences get to the point where you walk away from a project. It happens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, you yeah. know, it's... Yeah, well, I suppose that shows passion as well, that you yeah. care about the projects and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's a two-way street. I mean, yeah. you have to help and work with them, but mm. normally there should be a bit of a, <laughs> of a reciprocation there, you know, a bit of flexibility on both sides. When that's not the case, sometimes it gets difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to quickly say, I'm going to give you the opportunity to pitch some of the stuff that you're working on at the moment as well. Um, so one of the things I was interested in is, obviously, you've done stuff for Workshop in the past. Um, favourite Warhammer uh, army book and favourite? Warmer 40,000 codex that you that you contributed to? You got any favourites? Um, well, I obviously, because I'm I'm a Skaven fan, <laughs> I, I play I played Skaven in the Chambers version, then I wrote the Skaven book as well, the next one, and uh, I think it was a good book, except perhaps for the, some of the things were a bit too good, again, probably what you were saying about before, about mm-hmm. you know, being really excited about something you, you really have passion mm-hmm. about. You, yeah. My normal of, you know, everything has to be very balanced, everything has to be very... Uh, maybe that I was a bit like, oh, over the top with this game. Probably the one that I get most flack from. It might, be a, little bit, game, it it might be a little bit like that currently with whoever's written the Eldar Codex, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> you managed to nerf it and still leave it in the number one spot on the uh, on the tournament scene, so I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Skaven, probably. Yeah. Uh, but I do love Breton. Uh, sorry, you, know, you said things that I written myself well, right. yeah, so I, I mean, you, you don't have to be if, if, if yeah. you like Bretonians I mean who no. doesn't <laughs> that nice and shiny yeah, it's, 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 it's the heraldry that is so cool uh, so yeah no, Skaven I would say from Warhammer mm. uh, 40k I think the Demons mm. uh, I haven't worked in a lot, on a lot of codexes to be fair yeah. so the Demons was definitely a good fun one of doing something different um, so that was a big challenge with a, a hill that I almost died on oh, uh, oh. So, oh yes yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting uh, and um and uh, Lord of the Rings, well, I guess my passion there was Rohan, really. Mm. Uh, I have this, yeah, the, the, that charge of the Rohirrim, I don't know. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you've seen, that. somebody made a montage where they put Tolkien reading that part of the book oh. about the charge of the Rohirrim. Oh, it is film. says Tolkien reading and the scenes of the movie and they just match perfectly Amazing. they made this video uh, is you can find it online yeah Talking, reading the church that are hearing with the film underneath those images yeah uh, and i actually sent that video to richard taylor at weta saying it's like oh you have to show this to peter it is amazing and he was like oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because i've always liked the aesthetic of gondor but there's not a single scene where Rohan turn up that doesn't give you chills down your mm. down your spine is there? yeah <laughs> so, and obviously you got the that I guess the privilege of playing a dead Rohan man right. near a mummock because you had like was it Brian Nelson the Perrys and yourself yeah, that were on that right. scene yeah. Yeah. So, such a thing to, to tell your grandchildren and your children's grandchildren yes I've told the story a few times <laughs> tell us again tell I, it I was going to say I've never heard it yeah so. <gasps> wow <laughs> and, and many of our viewers probably won't have as well so. yeah. somebody who hasn't heard the story yet amazing <laughs> wow I forgot the planet there's more people that have heard the story than that haven't heard the story so yeah I'm pleased to, to tell it again yeah yeah so we were um, working on Return of the King and uh, so we went to New Zealand uh, to get kind of like Get Peter Jackson involved and get information. Uh, unlike the file base that was there, wasn't there? <laughs> so I was like, oh, can you tell us what's in the return of the king? And um, so on this mission, which was great, I mean, people there, so lovely. Uh, Richard Taylor invited us to his house, and it was, you know, Richard, the, the boss of Weta. Yeah. He is a lovely, lovely person. Anyway, so um, we, uh, as we work there for a couple of weeks, and then it's time to go back, and Peter Jackson says, oh, what a shame that you're going back, because in, in two weeks we're starting the pickup, so filming a few extra scenes, a bit that I need to put into the Return of the King, and if you are around, you know, I, well, why don't you stay? I'll put you in the movie as cameos, extras and stuff, and I was like, oh, we spent two weeks away from our families and work and stuff, we cannot really stay another two weeks. But, yeah. but, he said, but if you put us in a movie, we will come back in yeah. two weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he like, and he was like, yeah, sure, you're going to go back to England and the Antipodes and, you know, an hour on the plane and, sorry, sorry, a day on the plane yeah, yeah, and yeah. then back. Uh, I was like, no, you're not going to do that. I was like, no, no, we will. <laughs> we, we, we totally will. <laughs> we'll get in a movie. So we did and, uh, and then, yes, we, we've got this 
scene where we had the dead people around the the, the eleven o'clock, Mary's eleven o'clock, and uh, S. P. Pin is looking for it and finds it. So yeah, that was magical. You know, getting oh. on set, meeting all the actors. You know, me dressed as Ryder or Rohan, and because you're really close to the camera, the, your costume is perfect. Because the further away you are from the camera, the more kind yeah. of uh, the, the costume is not as detailed. But yeah, we they're had... just like here's a sack. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I was watching um, Zorb Zorb talk about that, and they had like a Rohan outfit, and it still looks really nice mm. but it was just like it was like machine stitched as opposed to like hand stitched and stuff like that yeah, there's just, different degrees yeah, of like, uh, accuracy yeah but so but i'm a driver on then you know uh, film the scene etc but you're on set all you see everything that goes on and I, i'll be cold let's go for a break let's go into this pavilion get some uh get some coffee but making coffee and then Aragorn the king <laughs> be going completely because he walks in and goes, you pass the coffee, the, the, the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my liege. <laughs> the sugar. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. It's just like, amazing. You know, like I was smiling oh, like this or whatever. Yeah. Even when I'm, I, I mean, the funny thing is that the lady, blood lady, the lady that squirts blood on the corpses there as you're lying down waiting for, <laughs> for the next take. And she kind of goes, you stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> you just died a violent death. You'd be stomped from by a boomer or something. Stop smiling. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, the number of times that she went and stop smiling. <laughs> Stay I, was just still. So, I was just so happy to die for Rohan. <laughs> I'm, I'm in Valhalla. Yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. You, you, you died a warrior's death. Yeah. And I'm right oh, thinking the, the base of the Momok is the four of you. That's right. Uh, as the dead bodies on the base, isn't it? Yeah. Is that, yeah. I was actually very funny at the tournament uh, with this funny Lincoln. I, I was uh, going around and uh, there was people with Mumex and uh, I wanted to brag and tell the story again. So I was just like, <laughs> I, go, <laughs> I pointed one well, of these guys they're playing. I go, oh, that, that, that's me there. You know, and he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, it's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was. A, <laughs> Somebody here today, not that's really him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's that's really I guess uh, it's like a rules writing is quite firmly behind the scenes. Like people might be familiar with your name, but not maybe what you look like. So if you wander up someone and go, that's me, like I'll be like, okay. People at tournaments going, don't make eye contact with me. He's on a yeah. He's <laughs> around pointing the faces again. Do you have like, do you have pictures in a book and you can be like, no, no, look, here I am. Here's Aragon. Here's Perry's as well. Like, it is me. You're like, Okay, I believe you now. Because one of the corpses has, has their arm, arm off at a certain distance, which is oh, what um, yeah, Michael God, was. Yeah. 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 yeah oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yes, he does that. Mr. What? Stumpy. <laughs> Mr. Stumpy. Mr. Stumpy. <laughs> Mr. Stumpy. He has a film career. He's featured on Peter Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking at Mr. Stumpy, going, mm, <laughs> eyes on, etc. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's been in all sorts. That's his Band of Brothers. <laughs> Multiple dead bodies. Yes, yes. Uh, that's that's film actor, film, film, film star, Mr. Stumpy, yes. Mr. Stumpy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top Gun actor. I've heard <laughs> saying, saying about the riders of Rohan on the big. I was reading the thing a while back ago that how many of them were women, weren't they? Oh, with beards. The bearded ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The bearded yeah, ladies. Was a, yeah, different. It was funny. <laughs> you know, you dress the rider on, bunch of riders on, meet some orcs in the, on the set, and kind of go, Aah! and they go, ah! <laughs> 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 what an experience. Like, yeah. I, I think Amazing. when because um, we had Gary Morlian and he yeah. had such a lovely experience of it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah like he had he had um, signatures. like signatures yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. like from Ian McKellen, and he, oh, had, yeah. he had pictures of like him like hugging Liz Hurley, not Liz Hurley, Liz Tyler, Liv Tyler, Liv Tyler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, but, yeah. That's in his own time. <laughs> yeah, it's because I watched Sharp recently. And it's just like, the name begins with L. <laughs> I, I do have a, an autograph book which is amazing and actually has a unique autograph that nobody else in the world has. I'm pretty sure I have the autograph of Shadow Fax. Oh, it was literally I was you know on set again. There, somebody uh, handler carrying the, yeah. the, the horse to another scene, and I go, "Can I have his autograph?" And the guy goes. A what? <laughs> yeah, the, the horse is holding right. Shadow facts. Like, okay. <laughs> so I put the the book on the on the ground, and they make him stand. Uh, hoof, amazing. Hoof on the thing. So I have a, still a hoof print on, like, my, on my book. Oh, yeah. 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 It's still you know kick mud from New Zealand and God amazing. knows what. But yeah, there's a print on my book. I got shadow facts. Yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> I don't think no one else has that. No, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't think so. Nobody. Yeah, he uh, yeah, was looking at me like I was completely mad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't that was just a horse. <laughs> I've never asked this of me. Never. Yeah. The horse would be like, I'd better be getting extra hay for this. 
Yeah, true. Hey. <laughs> hey, right. Imagine, the horses, <laughs> imagine the, horses, the horse's ego is just shattered when nobody else asked for it. Yeah. Horses yeah. stood there, loads of people with autograph books. Yeah. The horse is like, when you ready? <laughs> <laughs> when you ready? Yeah. You made that horse's day. Yeah. 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 Um, oh. So, River Horse, um, you've got lots of stuff on, <clears throat> on, on the cards, obviously, Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the things I can talk about, because again, yeah, we're still yeah, working on surfaces for other, other companies. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, the, the, the big thing is Ghost in the Shell. Is the thing Ghost in the Shell. And uh, we still do board games. I mean, like uh, the latest one, uh, and the pitch, another, another plug. This one is about, uh, this is a board game. This is not licensed, so unusual. Uh, it's a little village in Italy where I have a holiday home and uh, it's got a lot of history a lot of medieval stories so we make occasionally board games like these which are based on history and uh, not on license mm. but the meat and potato is definitely the license and these two are the two biggest uh, ips we have we have the jim henson collection which has labyrinth it's got dark crystal we yeah. recently just now made a frag of rock oh, card game. i was going to say that as a joke then and now you've just ruined that <laughs> i was going to go oh it'll be fraggle rock next it's a very much a family game you know, fraggle rock but yes yeah, so we, we've got the henson Henson collection line and then the my little pony uh series of adventures you know those mm. core books best is adventures is, is, is quite cool and we've done something similar oh probably that wouldn't ring a bell but uh, there's a character in in my little pony which is called discord mm. who's played by the, the voice actor is the same actor that plays q in star trek okay so, yeah, and, yeah. And the character is very similar he's super powerful godlike he's, yeah. he's the god of chaos effectively yeah. so he's got you know completely random fun completely change things just for fun so it, again we had the stats in the book and guess what they're all question marks <laughs> and he always breaks the fourth wall so yeah, he knows yeah. he's in a role-playing game so yeah. all these pages like him cracking jokes about people's like you know like a, a body point body um sometimes you know, it's, kind of like, it, it's yeah it's that kind of over the top bom- tom bombardier is in breaks all the rules yeah yeah yeah. Just, yeah yeah oh that's cool how many games like excuse I guess me like, oh <laughs> yeah. um I guess that how long is pretty stream, but like how many games would you make it a year? It varies. It yeah. varies. Yeah. You know, it, it really depends. I mean, licensing as um, you never quite know, particularly when you start a new license, like Ghost in the Shell, is because you're starting a new relationship with a new licensor. Mm. Some of them are really good at very fast at giving you feedback approvals. And yeah. You kind of, some of them take ages. Some of them are more precise, more careful. So it, it's very really difficult. Some years we do quite a few. Some years we do very little. Mm. Uh, you know, there's some, you know, it, it's not a, it, being that it's a small company cottage industry is not like you know you have a big studio with lots of things where you have to keep so i was mostly with freelancers uh, these days and uh, so yeah it sometimes it slows down sometimes it picks up but on average a couple of games a, a year i guess but there have been years where we've done a lot more the years yeah. where we've done less it varies i, I don't yeah. know mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah i find like i'm always i think when i learn about something like new and I'm like okay how does this industry work tell me everything um, so apologies if I'm no, asking just like really dumb basic questions no they're, they're great questions good uh, I've, I've obviously time for a few more from you guys but I've got no, a yeah, big list of patrons as well they pay the money left them they pay the money left them were space. you suction some airs if you were going to ask a question no so. no no, no. <laughs> I'm just old I have to take in large amounts of air every now and again keep so the brain keep the brain ticking over we, we often like to get our patrons to contribute and ask questions I've because I read through a bunch this morning, I've, I've reserved asking a few things because well, I'll let them answer, ask it, and then you can. Okay. You don't have to answer them. You can just go. I ain't answering. Is there yeah, a I cheese say, question? In I there. think there is a cheese. Well, question. Well, I would like to think so. The man's Italian. A cheese question is massively important. <laughs> <laughs> if not, we'll ask it. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So we got John Carter. Uh, not the Warlord of Mars, unfortunately. <laughs> or oh, Kata, maybe. Um, were there any times when you felt a rule should or shouldn't have been changed, but GW insisted on it? So, I guess during your time at Workshop. Well, I mean, like we said before, there are, your customer will influence your mm. rule sets. And sometimes, indeed, there are rules where you cannot go, this rule cannot be, or you know, change it. So, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it happens. Mm. It's a normal part of the process. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you don't always get, you know, everything your way. You have yeah. to 
you have to cater for other people's needs. And yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. So yes, all Sometimes. the time. All the time. The answer to that is yes, constantly. Yeah, it's part of it. Uh, Trevor Bailey, which games have impressed you with their rules? So I guess stuff that you probably haven't made. That yeah, makes sense, isn't it? Uh, it would just be funny just listen to all your own. Well, Terminus was very good. <laughs> Which is what we've been doing until now. Right? <laughs> right, let's let's get some other games in. Um, okay, games that I really like. I like to get to ride. I have to say, uh, oh, it's, it's just yeah. it's just does so much with so little. It's just yeah. I like games where they have very simple rules, but the game is amazing. Mm. You know, there's uh, a few Rhino Nithia one. There's one called High Society, which is just a little card auction bidding game, which again is five, ten cards. And my like, favorite one of that type was. Do you remember uh, Medici? Yes, I Medici remember, is a great, yeah, great, yeah. great, great one for trading your way around the board. Yeah, there's Condottiera as well, which is a very good card game where you have the map of Renaissance Italy, which is just a score points really. But yeah. the game is a card game with, with beautiful tarot-like cards, and so uh, other games that I like. I mean, I. I was, going, I was about to quote another River Horse game. You must have. Hunger Games is maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, uh, so we said, what do I play that is not. Uh, Oh, uh, the board games. We definitely play a lot of a uh, lot of Ticket to Ride recently. With, with, with I enjoy Ticket and, to Ride. My yes. my girlfriend bought it recently, and yeah. and we have fun. Mm. Yeah, yes. Just be like, oh my god, I got a train from London all the way to Russia. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's good yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. So I think if you could do in the fantasy world, we wouldn't be able to do on this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just get a train from here to Birmingham. It'd be an impressive. Yeah, that could be a game well, on its own. I, right. I, I played a game recently. Apologies, diversion. Um, called Brass Birmingham. Um, and that's oh, all, about, that, yeah. all about the Industrial Revolution uh, in the black country, which is where all, all the coal came from and all that sort of stuff. And that's really, really complicated, but, like, very good fun. Yeah. Apologies. No. Please no, no. carry Have you introduced... Because yeah. I haven't done it yet. Have you introduced your children to Settlers? Uh, we did play Settlers, but we don't own Settlers. So, no. Uh, oh, Small World. Speaking of that kind of thing, Small World is a very good fan. Have you tried Small World? No. no. Small World is a very cute little game of you know, fantasy races and the, the, the clever bit there is that you basically have races that invade and take on territory and stuff and through history you kind of you play a few turns with a the race then they, you retire and they kind of get extinct and or kind of become a legend and then more races come in but the clever thing is that uh, it gets like um, each race you pick a race and uh, a characteristic mm. which is random so you can get you know elves Flying, flying elves, no, uh, yes. uh, burrowing <laughs> trolls. Oh, burrowing trolls, that makes sense. Yeah, so there you go, you know, uh, like riding dwarves. <laughs> like, you know, right, like riders are on, but they're dwarves. Kind of thing. So it, it kind of mixes that thing around, which is kind of oh, leads to cool, funny actually. things. Yeah. That'd be so yeah. hilarious for Middle Earth. They just seem like the riders are around and the Yorks are like that big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, trying to stuff. get those ankles. Yes, diplomatic orcs. <laughs> yeah, that kind of thing. Oh, you get all this kind of. <laughs> Like that kind of suits. Thing. <laughs> uh, Richard Greathead, if you had to erase all the games you have worked on from history, except one, which would you keep? <gasps> oh, that's a question. But if I want to get keep... rid of every game ever you've ever made, <laughs> if, I to, if I want to keep having an income, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Fair, fair, they are, uh, Richard. That's answered that question. Um, oh, this is interesting. Alex Svanberg, what's your uh, what's your personal favourite implementation of rules, flavour, or law into a thematic game mechanic? Oh, they're big words. Lots of big words. Ooh, okay. I think you used a thesaurus to write that. I do wow. like big words. Mm. <laughs> I'm joking, wow. Alex. I'm sure you didn't. Uh, okay. Interesting. Personal favourite implementation of rules, flavour, or I think law. we had... I, it's difficult to pick one, of course, there's so much. But one thing we had a lot of fun with was the Terminator game. Mm. In the Terminator game, we did a lot of that, taking a theme and just going really going for it. And, for example, the re-rolls mm. in, uh, in Terminator, uh, which is, again, it's very commonly well, well-loved mechanic, where basically you have to re-roll something and... The way you do that is you have to you know, say you shoot and miss. Mm. You kind of go, oh, I want to reroll that, and that's you buy rerolls. You can play, but before you can reroll, you have to explain how you send somebody back in the past oh, to change cool. the fact <laughs> this this guy that fired the shot and, and missed. <laughs> yeah, you sent an agent back in the past to get, and and the other guy. 
can actually send their agent to stop you from getting the reroll. So you get a roll off of agents <laughs> in the past trying to, 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 to kind of stop each other. Like, oh yeah, I will get this guy trained better at shooting yeah. because of it. Like, That's okay. amazing. So you have to make up a little story that explains why you're rerolling the thing and uh, by sending your time agent, uh, your time displaced agent, and uh, the other guy can go, oh, uh, I don't want you to reroll that. I'll send a T800 to terminate your, your agent yeah. in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And so you roll oh. off between the agents, and then if the one who succeeds, actually, you can actually get a roll or not, kind of thing. So okay. And there's a lot of that playing on on the, the core things. That on, sounds so much you had, fun. You had a good episode about it well, a while ago because MS Paint did a video yes, about it. He did, he did. Mm. Dave did a, yeah. a, whole, a whole episode about the Terminator game. It was really cool, actually. And he, he was talking about that. Having to go back into the past to create correct things in the game, I thought it's quite cool. Because right. my head is immediately going like, right, okay, I'm gonna get his parents. I'm gonna send someone back in time to get his parents to send him to scouts so he can <laughs> learn to shoot with a bow and arrow, and then, and then Arnie coming back in time and just brutally murdering his scout leader. <laughs> That kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite funny as well because imagine the news report. You know, much love scout leader in mindless, mindlessly yeah. murdered. Thing. Yeah, Ch children traumatized. No, lang no longer like shooting bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like literally, there's no uh, badge on the uh, shoulders for it. <laughs> yeah. I think there would be a lot of fun to be had with with uh, just Michelle there because you you have so much of that uh, where she hacks into other into mm. opponents during a firefight you know where she's kind of for a second she switches off and you have the, you know you can see the other side people that are shooting and then maybe suddenly one of them turns around and shoots his own mates because actually he's, she's controlling yeah, him yeah. kind of thing so a lot of that I think I always love that in the Infinity game the ability to hack I, I always thought it was quite cool because the um, with them having like these um like walking drones and like and mech suits and the ability to be able to either if the roll's good enough you can sort of get them to shoot at their own if the roll's not quite so good they'll just it'll just stop it for a turn and things like it was really really quite clever game design i thought with that i like i do like the idea of hacking in games i think it's quite cool uh game of cadets asking favorite dessert favorite dessert <laughs> Oh God! Uh, I guess you have a seizure out and about. He'll, he'll bite you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, well, you have to go to Piedmont in Italy for that, and uh, you have to ask for a bonnet, which is like bonnet, uh, hat. Mm. That's the bonnet. Uh, it's a traditional uh, Piedmontese sweet dessert, uh, which is effectively how to describe it. Imagine a panna cotta, mm. kind of that kind of jelly texture, yeah. uh, with amaretto, cacao, cocoa, and um, liqueur in it. Yeah, kind of. Um, so it's very like maybe a, a Christmas pudding, but yeah, it doesn't have any raisin or anything. It's literally just a panna cotta, but uh, loaded with interesting stuff and uh, like liquor, uh, which uh, <laughs> makes it yummy. Uh, and cocoa, yeah, yeah. I, I have a customer who comes in. He um, born in England, but his father, uh, his father was Italian, and uh, he has the greatest name ever. It's such a lovely name. His name is uh, Sergio Cantalamessa. <laughs> and he comes in, and every year he always brings me uh, a panna cotta. Oh. And I was go, oh, he said, goes, he goes, it's not a Christmas if a family hasn't got a panna cotta. Panna <laughs> panna You mean panna cotta? Panna cotta, right? Panna cotta, yeah. Panna cotta, yeah. Panna cotta, yeah. Panna cotta, yeah. Panna yeah. Panna cotta, 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 yeah. Panna I'm sure that some Italians will hate me for saying this, but I think Pandora is so much better than Panettone. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> That's a big thing between Panettone and Pandora Christmas. So <laughs> Try Pandora on it. Make a war game. <laughs> <laughs> is this a region? Is it, is it, in all seriousness, is it a regional thing? Part of it. But actually, Panettone and Pandora are national level things. But yeah. yes, I, I, some regions would eat them maybe with different sauces and stuff and so there is potentially for a, a conflicted war game always in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and there's no miniatures you just rip off chunks so. I, I definitely brain. believe this should... as the more damage you just eat more <laughs> <Yeah>. of it <laughs> there, there, there definitely needs to be a board game or a war game that talks about different ways of pronouncing bread in the UK <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> like a I mean it gets hectic on here in our yeah. comment section going it's not a bap it's a cob <laughs> so, yeah, oh, it's not, oh you could you could turn that into like is it when they have um 
like in in res- wrestling where they have loads of people in the ring all at once. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like the Royal just, Rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a Royal you could Rumble, have a break but them down like, as actual regiments, couldn't you? Could you be like, like you know, fourth, fourth, like Cobb regiment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, oh. and you definitely mm. the title has to be Roll a Dice. Yeah. The roll oh, the Dice. Oh, but oh, oh, you're taking sides. You're taking sides already. Oh no! I mean, you can tell that's what you do as a job. So, I mean, I'm not expecting you to come up with anything off the top of your head, but I just thought it was quite a funny uh, comment, which is from Adam Langford. Please create a special rule for each of the painting phase crew. For example, for Pat. I don't know where this is coming from, Pat, so I feel off- offended on your behalf. Oh, God. Uh, Stop yourself in, Pat. Last minute hero, apparently. <laughs> this this unit does uh, does everything last minute. I don't know where he's getting this from. You're... I think it's probably true. <laughs> yeah. Leader cannot move in the movement phase, but moves in the shooting phase instead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're always like one, one, like face, be- one face behind. Yeah. Uh, no, you don't have to answer that. How, does he, <laughs> how does he know me so intimately? I think in your case, particularly, it should be powers of uh, lo- loveliness, I remember. because my, Powers uh, of loveliness? Kyoko, Kyoko, I used to work at the social <laughs> friends. She was like, oh, yeah, well, where are you going? I'm going to see these guys and they go Peter you remember oh yeah the lovely guy <laughs> <laughs> the lovely guy yeah I remember when she was still in the translation team actually yeah, that was a rough time for the translation team as well when they were uh, moving on a bit but yeah yeah, yeah Kyoko was great always, always friendly I'd marry her yeah, I, can. <laughs> I agree. I have to agree, particularly on camera. Oh, oh, you're literally talking about your wife. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's the way you said, I have to agree. <laughs> I'm, legally, I'm legally obligated to think of it. Hope she's not watching. <laughs> Hi. Uh, there's a few questions that have been asked a few times, or a, a similar sort of questions. Uh, so Chris S in the hindsight is there a game that failed for want of a better word that that with different rules could have been a success for Games Workshop or I suppose not necessarily Games Workshop maybe for River Horse as well potentially so if you had a game system that didn't do so well um, with uh, for want of a better reason I, I don't know what that is that with different rules could have been a success but I suppose yeah, a, game, you, a game that didn't work I, I don't know well, if there was what one is it, that? No. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. not for I, you you didn't <laughs> fail <laughs> I like this I was trying to <laughs> <laughs> well no I don't know any, it doesn't any fail it doesn't games. fail what was that 100% no, I mean, successful <laughs> Okay, trying to be serious about that. Uh, I mean, it's difficult to tell whether a, a system, a game, or something is not successful because of the rules. I think, like Rick Plisley always teaches us, is a lot of it is the presentation, is the marketing, is the is, is what the models look like. I think rules are important, but they're not definitely not the most important thing and not the, the dominant part in particularly in war gaming and hmm. uh, maybe something like a board game. Is more important because mm. the, you know there's less there. But in a hobby like wargaming, uh, I wouldn't think. I mean, I'm sure there must be situations where rules really destroy a system. But I don't. I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my experience. <laughs> That's fair. Actually, the accolades of rule systems that you've made, I think you're fine. <laughs> you've got quite a lot of good ones under your belt. Uh, what we've got here Chris uh, sorry Keith uh, Winquist uh, do you follow any particular design philosophy or do rules just happen through the writing process oh, no. my philosophy is something that I rant all the time and oh, uh, cool. I got in trouble with uh, several times and <laughs> it's just uh, um, I mean the motto of River Horse is uh, simplicity uh, sorry sophistication for simplicity mm. and um, is for me is the the task, the grail, the, the the holy grail of rules writing is to write rules that are so simple that they disappear. They don't exist. Mm. Like the example I always use is chess. In terms of when you play chess, you don't think of the rules. Yeah, you're not thinking, oh, how does how does a bishop move? How, how can I do this? Uh, can yeah, I, oh, how does a bishop? Done, yeah. So you're thinking of the game. You're yeah. thinking of the strategy. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do that, and then he does that. So you're thinking of how to win the battle in the war game, not, oh, how does the war work? Mm. Oh, so the idea is, for me, was to boil down rules to as simple as possible. And then, of course, <clears throat> if it's a successful system, the last three years, I don't know, Kings of War, very simple stuff, very simple rules. And then for the years, people keep obviously new rules, new armies. I mean, bolt action, the same. New army books all the time, campaign books. So it gets progressively more organic and grows mm. and kind of becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And then when you go next edition, yeah. start again. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but 
the ideal philosophy for me is always to simplify radically, yeah. really radically stuff to, to, to the point that some people have accused some of my systems to be simplistic, which is a word I love, <laughs> absolutely hate. It just makes, drives me mad, the old simplistic. Yeah. I was just like, also, apart from the fact that some people use simplistic wrongly, thinking is a positive, they think, is oh, this game is really simplistic and nice. And you get like, you mean it's simple and nice, not simplistic and nice. Yeah, simplistic yeah. is a negative connotation. It's too simple. Or like, you know, lazy has the connotation yeah, of words. Yeah. Simplistic, you just, you know, like, well. And mm. I hate that with a passion because sometimes I... The, the difficult part is taking away stuff. I mm. mean, Jervis, again, is very famous for uh, saying this. You know, you, a, good, a designer knows he's done a good job when you, there's nothing left to take out, not when there's nothing left to add. Uh, so is, is that trying to distill things, to boil down to simple, 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 which again, part of the Lord of the Rings, why is this so good? Mm. And still to this day, I think, again, because we've done a lot of that. Mm. And so, no, I, I am on a crusade to always try to make rules smaller and smaller and smaller. And... Uh, Sometimes uh, people don't agree and uh, yeah. think they're simplistic, and yeah. uh, we have an argument. <laughs> James, James said something similar when when we had him on. He said that that kind of like if there's like oh, but the whole game revolves around this thing, and he was like, you probably have to get rid of it, take it out. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 as a firm fan of Warcry, I think it does. Uh, although not written by yourself, it, it does follow that 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 mantra of um, being a very simple rule set that I often find now because the pages of rules. I've read through, there might be the odd rule I have to check every now and again. It's something I don't use very often, which is climbing or falling down. Mm. Um, I have to have a quick, I know where to look and have a quick look. I'm like, oh yeah, that's, I thought mm. it was that, but I sometimes have to check. So I guess to a certain degree, it's not as simple as, as um, like it would be ideal, but I don't read the rules. I just enjoy the game because the rules are already embedded in my head. Yeah, that's um, that's which, what you want to do. And we get, we get comments about, like, Warcry is a rubbish game because it's too simple. I'm like, mm, I don't think it is. I think it's the right level of sim I, simple. I, I don't know it, I'm afraid. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it's, an, it's a Warhammer, Age of Sigma um, skirmish game. Um, it's still not as good as Lord of the Rings, but it's <laughs> close. And he, just on the subject of uh, chess, very quickly, um, uh, did you see Queen's Gambit on yeah. Netflix? Yes. And then they went, oh, this has been successful. And they made Queen's Gambit the board game. And I was like, <laughs> I was like "Isn't that a really old game? I'm sure it's been around a long time." That yeah, game, yeah. So, and, and I was Didn't like, "Didn't to make it before the, the TV show? <laughs> yeah, really? yeah. Not, not chess." So, <laughs> so this was my thought. But you play it on a chessboard, and there's pieces, but they move like. I was going to ask if you'd ever seen it. Um, yeah, not the game. No, 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 no. Cause, um because I, I looked at it and I was just like, "What on earth? <laughs> it's chess, but it's like some weird form of like hybrid chess." Well, before well, we, we did, yeah, we, we, before we went live, we we're talking about uh, your Shuro, isn't it? Shuro, the first game the Riveros ever made. <laughs> yeah, the very first game uh, is called Shuro and is uh, effective chess hammer. Really, <laughs> as in, as literally, is you have pieces, lots of pieces, just pieces on a big board with some cubes that are effectively terrain, and you terrain is randomly placed on the board, and uh, you pick an army. So you can go. Each piece has a value, which is in, ch in chess exchange theory. Obviously, you know, like you know, a, a rook is worth five pawns, and a, a rook, is, sorry, a, a bishop is worth three pawns. So they have points values based on pawns, and, and therefore it's like, okay, you have a thousand points or a hundred points, whatever. Go pick your army, and you all have three queens and two rooks. Oh, very small army, very yeah. powerful. Oh, or like, cool. no, I'll have you know twenty pawns and fifteen knights, and create a knight and lots and lots of arm, small guys and knights. And so, so it is basically make your own army of chess and play chess. That sounds thing. really fun. Yeah. The, the the best variant was the four player variant called Turanga, which was an expansion, and then we did Loka, which is the same thing but in uh, with with the fantasy miniatures as opposed to chess pieces but yeah no, yeah so we did toy with chess yeah yeah, yeah. Making chess oh. war gaming never played it but I, well, I, I watched and observed because um when early days of my career in the studio lots of like rules writers were able to make their own games and do their own things and like, have their own companies of stuff going up and then obviously the contracts changed and stuff but i do remember seeing that being played a few times in in bugman yes. uh it was good i'm gonna have to, what was it called again? shiro i can write it down oh, for you after yeah. uh, shiro, which well. means warrior in sanskrit mm. i have a thing for sanskrit yes i thought it was like churros is in the spanish <laughs> <Churros>. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, it's like it's like the name of the company. I can't sure it comes from uh, uh, playing words. As in, why why is it River Horse? You were mm, asking yes, before. Yes, yeah. And uh, well, basically, it's 
because in Japanese, well, because I marry a Japanese lady and went to Japan, and we had to have the stamps made with our my surname, etc. So, the stamp that m- makes my name Kabatore, as you pronounced in Japanese, if you were to read my surname Kabatore in in, in, in Japanese, a way, one of the possible ways to write that is to use this symbol, uh, Kaba. Which is the symbol for? I mean, it means hippopotamus. So it has a hippopotamus, oh. and, and therefore Kaba Tore. It sounds like uh, hunt the hippo or catch the hippo in Japanese. That's my surname, and the hippo became the kind of the totem animal, etc. And what fascinated me was that when I saw the symbol, my little poor Japanese, I saw that the symbol was actually included. A part of it was a river symbol, which is like three squiggly lines. Kind of mm. a... So hippo has river in it. And like hippopotamus in Greek is hippos is a horse and potamus is a river, so is uh, hippopotamus is a river horse uh, in Greek. Yeah, and in Japanese apparently, and then with oh Chinese characters hippopotamus horse river river horse, and then we went to like okay Sanskrit where you know from ancient India which went into the West and to Greece into Greek and into and into Japanese and into the Chinese. So the 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 Sanskrit roots of river horse hippopotamus. Kabatora, my surname, there you go. I love the fact it's a night riding a hippo as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. As right. you were describing it all, okay, I saw that earlier and I was like, what is that? And then I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 4,000 4, deaths a year at the moment, hippos. Really? One really? of the deadliest animals in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to 11 shark deaths oh. a year. Yeah. Mm. I, cows kill more people than sharks. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, apparently more people choke on lettuce than they're killed by sharks, but, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 4,000 <laughs> 4, deaths a year, um, I suppose. Oh, wow. For. Mad. Yeah, vicious. Here we go. We're into the, <laughs> Which is weird when you consider they're vegetarian. So it means <laughs> they are actually hunting you for sport. <laughs> <laughs> That is worrying, isn't it? Really? <laughs> oh, that, that got dark. <laughs> it did go dark quick. Uh, barely, barely, barely. What would the one cheese be that you'd find in all games that you've designed? <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting spin I mean, I mean, you, I mean you could just say what's your favourite cheese yeah. but... I mean probably easier I, mean, that's, I think that's a dead basic question I mean. yeah. <laughs> if you had to put a small chunk of cheese in every box of game what would it be <laughs> you have to have the mother of all metaphors here, so yeah. <laughs> how can you answer that question what's your uh, favourite cheese unless you favourite cheese <laughs> well I mean Many cheeses, obviously. Uh, gorgonzola. I like blue cheese, so uh, mm. gorgonzola being a probably a good from Italy. But I mean, one thing that I learned here, uh, an old English gentleman, when I moved to England, uh, he took me aside and was like, "Oh, at Christmas time." He was like, "Oh, I'll teach you this this tradition." And so we started with you know uh, Stilton and port and biscuits, and yeah. uh, and since then I was like, "Oh, oh, oh, oh <laughs> Stilton and port, mm. Stilton, mm. Yeah. Stilton and port." Mm. So yes, I, I never used to be a fan of Stilton. I just yeah, it's like my. Cheese of choice now. Yeah, yeah, I guess maybe older. And blue cheese tends to be more like a, an old man's. Thing. So you're getting well, older. Yeah, your palate always changes, doesn't it? Mm, it's like yeah. you know, not a lot of people before, not a lot of people under twenty five particularly like olives, do they? It's a, is it really? Yeah, no, no. It's, no. It's, interesting. Yeah. I, it's, usually, my my wife she's Japanese, and when, with blue cheese, they really don't get blue cheese. It's like it's rotten. Yeah, my it's wife. Moldy. My wife. Just... My wife's the same. <laughs> <laughs> my, <laughs> My my wife my wife bless her she will buy it for for me especially for Christmas but she won't she won't eat it. I, I, I remember it. like my first like I love a glass of red wine um, but the first time I had it I was just like oh my god it tastes like trees like <laughs> it tastes I, like trees thing, right yeah. surely it's a good thing. <laughs> right. it's like, Do you know I always feel I always look really uncultured because when lots of my friends drink it with meals and so on I'm sitting there with something else because I immediately gives it I the minute my first swig of it and I have a headache. Oh, really? I just get yeah. my hangover straight away. I don't need to go to bed to get my red wine. Well, then wine you can just help the dog it, right? Well, yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it yeah. instantly it just like ruins the night if I have a glass of red wine. It's yeah. something and it ju- I just don't get on with. I don't That's know what it. it is. That's interesting. It, it's, it was funny because, like, say I make a joke about, oh, my God, it tastes like trees. Like, <laughs> I went to a... Sorry, I sound like a rat pants. Me and my partner, we went to a wine tasting. Um, oh, too late, Diego. Yeah, and uh, and they were like, "Yeah, re- you can really taste the forest floor." And I was just like, "There you go." I was like, "Yeah, it tastes like trees." <laughs> I was like, first time. I knew that. I knew that before. Yeah. Well, it took me a long time before you know, like proper beer stops stop tasting like Marmite. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do like the description of the back of wine bottles sometimes. My favourite being like, taste of freshly cut grass. I was like, I, I just wanted to taste of wine. If <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm a cow. <laughs> uh, we've got Nathaniel Westwood. Um, this is news to me, but probably not news to you. After doing so much to enrich the history of the mercenary city-states, Tilia and Astilia, to the old world, do you hope to see the return in the new old world game? I didn't know you did much for Tilia and Astilia. I, well, I wrote, definitely not, not Astilia, no, not, the, not the Spanish side of things, but I did do some bits about, about hmm. the, the, the Italians, yes. Yeah. Uh, I remember Nigel was writing the Dogs of War book. Yes, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And one of the first things, I think I was still a translator at the time, uh, he obviously came and talked to us about it. Hmm. Oh, There's a bunch of Italians here, and so all this stuff. And I, <laughs> I, I got, because I, I know my history fairly well, I, we got along very well, and I did write, um, my, in fact, my first bit of background, that I ever wrote, written for Warhammer is in the Dogs of War book. Oh. It's uh, basically a story of... Um, it's from history. It's mm. this um, a mercenary leader uh, that uh, in the in the wars in the Renaissance there, basically there was these companies that were hired by the various lords and to fight for them. And uh, there's a famous story where this guy gets a, gets a um, shot in the leg with a kind of arquebus, kind mm. of bigger caliber thing. It's in between a cannon and, and a handgun. Uh, but... Basically, they have to amputate his leg, and uh, so the, the surgeon goes like, "Well, this is the, the captain, you know, he's the, the important guy. We better get this one right." And he goes, "Oh, captain, we need to call fifteen men to hold you while I amputate your leg." And the guy goes, "Well, what are you talking about?" And takes a candle and goes, "Go, cat, I'll hold the candle for you to show how manly this guy was." Really, I'm sure he's very accurate. But so I made the same version with a, an empire leader being yeah. shot by a skaven Jezebel and things. And the, the Amazing. Same thing. Yeah. I, I do like the... Uh, Cox and Skaven there. I wonder how that came about. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's a lot of fun things in the Dogs of War book and there's there's the Juan Conetto song. Uh, just Juan Conetto. <laughs> Give him to me. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a few very, very, very rude things that Nigel had a very cool sense of humour. Yeah, but unfortunately, um, not for uh, not to be repeated uh, on live uh, <laughs> streaming. <laughs> there's a few rude jokes there, yes. Uh, no point answering that one because it's been answered. What, uh, so this is from Doc miniature what rule systems feature from another developer have you seen and thought oh that's a really good clever way of doing that definitely not the answer to this one i was in italy i was watching uh massimo toriani who's a, a guy that wrote games uh writes games i got him to write some part of volt action and so so he is a very a game designer uh, well an entrepreneur and uh anyway uh, volcanic guy and i remember watching this game and he's doing this I think it's World War Two system where and there's a there's a scatter of, of a template involved and he just picks a D10 or rolls the D10 and the D10, unlike all the other polyhedrons, the other polyhedrons are regular, mm. are regular solid, so they actually don't have a polarity. They are kind of you know the, the, the triangles. All, all the faces are the same, so mm. there is no direction in them. The D10 is not a platonic solid; it's not a regular solid. Has an arrow is actually shaped like that. Of course, and the number in the arrow. So a D10 is a perfect scatter die because you just roll it and it will, give, it will give you a direction and a number at That's the same genius. time. Particularly if they are the zero, the ones that have yeah. zero instead of 10. Yeah. So actually zero is a hit. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. you go, this is how much it scatters and this is the direction. It's a zero, you hit. So one in 10, you hit automatically. Mm -hmm. And then you scatter by, you know, this direction, one inch, which is nothing, not a lot. Yeah. So you kind of hit. So you just went, yeah, don't need scatter dice, D10. That's like, so small. I was like... Yeah, oh, yeah, stealing that. Yeah, that <laughs> is totally stealing that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's just one yeah. dice as well, being rolled, not two. So right. yeah, yeah direction and distance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a smart human. I do like that. Uh, uh, oh my days. Um, Zamfire skew Adrian. My hi, I've probably murdered your name. I do apologise. Uh, how would you update the more time rules if you had the chance? Uh, would you like to have the chance? Well, that's that's a question for Thomas, not for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, modern is a fantastic system. They all kind of you know see your warband developing and tinkering and changing. I think well, what I do with that, I, I would approach Lego. Because oh, <laughs> yeah. you can go, oh, stick this bit out. <laughs> Customizable Lego. In fact, I will approach Lego. Yes, <laughs> yeah. well, that's what um, that's what me and my friends did. We were used to play um, Spaskus. Yeah, the, the yeah board I remember. Game. Yeah. 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 But the problem being was is you could upgrade the gladiators, but the miniatures for it were preset as to right. what they were. 
and then Lego in them little blind bags started to do Romans and then Centurions and then they did a, two variants of Gladiators and then you had Celts and then you had a Barbarian right. and then the next thing we had a whole range of weaponry and you could go you could give the Gladiator the small round shield you could give him a spear yeah. you could so in the end we could actually put Lego figures on and the great thing is as well is that in the game uh, in the fight in the arena there was a decapitation so you could actually <laughs> nice. the person who owned the game hated being my bestie for this he went you're ruining the game because you've got lego figures I go, but it actually does it's a perfect. better job of yeah. describing the weaponry <laughs> yeah, than, yeah, yeah. than you than, than this static figure can do yeah See, so. I, I i very similar to well not quite the arena stuff but i there's a set of rules called brick quest which was hero quest but with lego oh genius um yeah. but you could like and i did it with my mates and i literally just gave them like a a box of heads, a box of bodies, a box of legs, box of weapons. Go make your character. So they made the character and gave it what they wanted. Like, what's it going to be? A wizard and stuff. And literally everything was made out of Lego. So even like your um, your character sheet was Lego. So it was like so many like red like Lego bricks to represent health and yeah, like yeah. Um, like yeah, movement yeah. and stuff. But I also made like a little box for inventory. So you had like a hinge on it. So as long as the lid closed flush, you could carry what you want. Oh, that's cool. But if it, if it had like a bit of a lift on it, you, 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 could, you, had, wow. to, you had to get rid of something. You had to cool. drop it. Well, that... But I also made like little mechanics because Lego is really good at having like little mechanics and things move yeah, and do yeah, stuff. Yeah, so. like a, almost like a measurement in the in the, in the, the, the blocks. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. You're saying like, about, you know, making the stats. It's that um, when we visited, um, we visited the, uh, I don't know if you've been, the, the, the Lego house. Which is a big interactive centre. It's in Billenden, Denmark, where where they're based. We went. We you, you go in and you just spend the whole day there. But it, it, they, when you eat your dinner, they give you your menu, and then there is a pack of Lego, and you have a board, and then you go. Well, I'm going to have chips. So you put yellow a yellow strip on the board, and you're going to go and fish, which is a blue strip, and then the greens to go with it, and then you just build your meal, and then next to you there is an iPad built into the, the wall and you just take the thing and you just plug it in the bottom of it and then literally goes into animation and you'll see Lego <laughs> figures driving a chalk uh, 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 um, <laughs> a, a forklift with a big piece of broccoli on it and then <laughs> and then you just see them start to build your dinner and then they go go and collect your dinner and you walk over and at the very top of the ceiling there is a rolling um a rolling sort of like a slide if you will and you stand there, and then these large le Lego boxes, which are like a, look like an enormous six by two brick, just come rolling down. And then when they roll all the way to the bottom, there is two robots which are made out of all bits you recognise, but massively oversized. Wow. That, if I remember rightly, might have chef hats on. And then it drops in front of them, and then they grab your brick, and then they push it down more rollers, and it ends up with this weird plastic brick. And then when you go down and open it, all your dinner is inside it. It's really, <laughs> wow. really bizarre. Exactly. And, it, and you know what? The Lego house was amazing. It was yeah. absolutely amazing. But if you say to any of our the, the four of us that went, you know, me and wife and my two children, you say, what was the best thing in Lego house? Everyone goes, I'll oh, build them me dinner. <laughs> building yeah. a dinner was the best thing in there. Yeah, was, I mean, is, yeah, I mean, that sounds I was going to ask, because like, it's going down this slide thing, does it, like, get yeah, mushed it's, around it's, a bit? No, it's like, you know, um, you know, you know, rollers. It's, it's, so it, it's very, you know, uh, so it's okay. very, so, it, so it, you know, it doesn't come down and it's, you know, it's <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> but it's, but it's, you know, it's not like, you know, <laughs> if it was like that, you know, but it's, so, it's, it's, so it does this, so it keeps, it, you know, it's yeah, a very, okay. very slow That's descent. Amazing. And then it rolls down. But the idea, you just build it with bricks, I think, is really yeah. cool. I've got um, a couple more questions on mine. I bet yours is a bit more updated. For some reason, it won't update anymore. But um, uh, Scott try. Gray is saying, as a player, what's your favourite game and favourite army? Do you have any favourite games to play and have any favourite armies? Are we talking... Sorry. Just, just any game. Any do you game? have a favourite game and a, a favourite army within that game that you like to like to play? I mean, if you stick to Workshop, uh, definitely love... I mean, probably in terms of s smaller games, I, I love Blood Bowl. I yeah. really love Blood Bowl. Uh, as in, I think Jervis did a masterpiece with that. It's just <laughs> great. He's got the best bits of wargaming and board gaming into, into one, rolled into one thing. It's just lovely. So in Blood Bowl, I would play Skaven. Surprise. <laughs> um, so that, I guess, in uh, Five Army, uh, in, in Bolt Action, I tend to, to use uh, Americans as in US Army. Mm. It's because, as I always said, Bolt Action for me is a Hollywood 
portrays Hollywood movies. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's Band of Brothers. He yeah. is, you know, Saving Private Ryan. So, you know, I grew up with the, you know, the Americans are the good guys kind of thing in my head. And uh, there you go. That's that's what I play. Yeah, I tend to play yeah. the, the good guys in, in battles. Which, you know, I, let's not go political. I understand yes, that yeah, obviously yeah, reality yeah, is a bit yeah. more <laughs> nuanced than that. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, in general, I think World War II, I like that, that vibe. So, uh, difficult. Yeah. There's so many fighter armies. I love Eldar in 40K. I have a huge elder army. Uh, nice. I still have, yeah. Maybe one day I'll start playing for the gay again. So I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you got some more questions on there then, Pat? Um, or is that all of them? I think. I think uh, well, I'll, I'll let you That's know. right, yeah. I'll I'll like... I, could, I could take your phone if you want yeah. to. I think we might have got through most of them. Uh, so oh, no. I, I've scrolled down to the bottom. Oh, yes. Oh, there's only a couple more that are missing, and that's fine. Uh, is that the same guy? Gamer Cadet, what do studios look for in rules right, uh, rules writers slash games designers? So, obviously, when you're pitching yourself out to, hmm. to uh, anything they're particularly looking well, for. My advice would be work on your person skills, your soft skills, because I think that is the most important thing. Being a nice guy, hmm. being somebody that people want to work with and have find it easy to work with and even you know want to work with it because it's fun so if, if you want to work in a company as, as, as an employee uh because you spend most of your life there uh, mm. you know uh, five days a week uh, full-time thing you really want to be a nice person mm. uh, uh, easy going friendly person that is fun to work with because your skills can be trained yeah you can learn yeah, you, I have learned all the game design I know from Rick Priestley, Jervis Johnson, all you know, the, all the, the team there and, uh, and the chambers, and so you can learn skills. But if you're not a nice person, people don't want to work with you. Yeah, yeah regardless yeah. of how skilled you are. Uh, so that would be my advice: is just be a nice guy yeah. and learn. And yeah, you know, I think the learning attitude is important. Yeah, be yeah. a nice guy. Thinking, you know, uh, what have I learned today? Ask yourself that every time. Learn things. So that, that's what I think is most important. Mm. Specifically, I mean, yes, what, what do you want in a game designer? Well, yeah, obviously, having skills to do with game design is hot. There's in play lots of games would be the other advice. <laughs> Knowing a lot of uh, other games in the in the same area gives you a, obviously a knowledge that you can use. But, yeah, no, I think soft skills are as important, if not more important, than your actual skill skills. Yeah, that can be taught. That can be learned. Well, it, it definitely helps build the environment around you as well, doesn't it? So it makes things a lot, uh, yep. a lot easier to, to do stuff. I mean, I certainly remember like, for it was weird. There was a, I don't know if you remember this. Like, we used to get feedback sessions out to give feedback to everybody. There was like these forms out to go out around around the studio, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, someone wrote on mine like, "Oh, you need to be more firm because you're a bit too laid back and this that and the other." And I was like, "Okay, so I'll try to be more firm." And I got another one from the same person saying, "You're too firm. You need to like chill out a bit." I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you want. <laughs> I'm trying so hard right now." I think I think I know the problem. I, I'm the same. I, I I tend to go friendly, 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 aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have the mid ground where you yeah. assertive. I cannot do assertive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can go friendly. Or aggressive. I don't think I've ever seen the, aggressive yeah. Valencia. I need it, to see that. Not often. Not often, <laughs> but yeah, yes, it's not pretty. Uh, I'm going to lead out with the last one, which is just to, you know, stroke your ego a bit more. Uh, <laughs> why are Lord of the Rings rules so good at 20 years after they are still the same? Is there any unit in that range that you have special love for? Well, we know what that is. It's going to be Rohan, isn't it? Rohan, yes, <laughs> Rohan. Uh, I played a lot of Rohan. Oh, oh, did you play a Rohan, like, in I, the film? I, I heard <laughs> that. I'm sure I heard that message. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> let me let me start. You know on the base. You know on the base. Listen, what oh, did yes. we learn? Yeah. I'll, I'll bring the base in so you can see it. Yeah, that's Alessio. <laughs> 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 that's great well um, that's all our questions yeah. from the patrons um, so thank you guys for checking those through uh, lovely humans it's always nice to see what our, our patrons uh, cool. usually uh, I'm surprised with the cheese one this this, this time around it was very <laughs> complicated <laughs> yeah. was very, <laughs> more left and centre than it normally is <laughs> you can say there's blue cheese throughout all my games so <laughs> it's, it's, it's the smell yeah. <laughs> Blue cheese and cheese. Blue cheese. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for sharing your stuff as well, and obviously what River Horse is working on. Oh, when um, are we looking at? Uh, what's the? When are we looking at Ghost in the Shell? What do we think is the? Well, likely? next year, twenty four will start. Uh, there's a whole range of products to be done, so we we, we could go. Um, 
card game, role play game, war game, board game. So that we can do them all, and we'll will do them all. It's just in which order still to be worked on, and it, it will all depend. Timing will depend on approval. We just started, so don't know exactly because yeah, it depends how fast the the all approval goes. Well, yeah. with the love for the film, I'm massively looking forward to it. I really am. Yeah, yeah. 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 if you need any playtesters. That can be, uh, yes, 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 yes. 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 Yeah, I need to definitely... swap up on my uh, Ghost in the Shell then, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll bring, I'll, um, I'll bring me, me no buckle along, give me briefcase, the one that's got the machine gun built into the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> Do, can you fire it whilst the briefcase is closed? No, they don't oh. in the car, they, they don't <laughs> in the car too. It's like the, uh, you know, like the way, you know, some uh, assault rifles have a, have a, ha- you know, like the M16 has yeah. that handle. Well, it's the handle, isn't it? Oh, in, the, in the handle, you press the button and the, the, the briefcase falls away in the machine gun side. It's just a yep. it's a bit of a, just a really cool scene at the beginning That's of the film. That's quite smart, yeah. I like that. Yep. I like things like that. Well, thank you very much for, yeah, for coming thank on. Thank you for having me. It's been, a, it's it's been fun. great. It's been great. Thank fun. you very much, Alessio. And uh, good luck with uh, River Horse and obviously Ghost in the Shell. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah. very much. May your labyrinth sails forever be strong. <laughs> <laughs>